Hello everyone and welcome to Saturday Night Crafting. Gosh, it's been so long. I was intending again for a midweek video, but uh, life is a bit crazy for me at the moment. I won't go into any details, but it is just a bit hectic and I'm a bit short on time. So forgive me that it is again just a Saturday night video. I will be doing my half an hour crafting again. I love that series and at the moment I'm a bit short on time so that works well for me and I know you guys love it as well so I will do some more of those videos. It's just been a bit chaotic and I've been struggling for time. So without further ado we have got some Saturday night crafting and I'm so happy to be with you guys and I am so happy to be crafting and enjoying a Saturday night again. So for this one, I wanted to keep it a bit more simple, um, take it back to more of a basic technique. So tonight we're using some pencil crayons. I've got this blue cardstock. I bought a absolute hoard of it. I've got four of those packs that I just shared with you on the screen. I'm also going to use some embossing powder. I don't use this one here, the white one that I shared with you. I don't end up using it. But I wanted to share it with you anyways, because if you've got a clear one or a shimmery one, that will work. I've got my Arteza pencil crayons. These are just their normal pencil crayons, the expert ones. They're very waxy. They feel like an actual crayon rather than a pencil crayon or um, a coloring pencil is what they call it in the UK. Um, and I think most of the world, I think Canada's one, maybe one of the only ones that calls it a um, pencil crayon. Um, but I'm using those because they are amazing. They're very waxy and they give a really good solid pigment. So try whatever you've got in your stash. If you've got your kids pencil crayons or um, colored pencils, dig those out. I'm making myself a card base and I wanted something a bit unique. So I pulled out my hexagons or octagons, whatever that one is. I never know. I need to just count the sides and then I'll know. And I'm making myself a card base. Now the trick to this is you can just take a piece of A4 cardstock, fold it in half, and you line up your die so it's hanging just over one of the edges. And you die cut through your cardstock. Now I went and cut a second one out of a single sheet of cardstock, and you'll see why in a second. When we put this one on top, it will exactly line up over the top of the base, but it will cover up that seam just at the top. Now, my cardstock is mega uber thick. It is like 350 GSM, maybe more. So the die doesn't quite get through all the layers. And all you have to do is take a pair of long scissors, and I'm not even really cutting. I'm just kind of gliding my scissors along that seam and it's just cutting it for me. And that's all you need to do if your die won't cut through all the way through your cardstock. Now you can see that top layer there just hangs over the edge a little bit to cover that seam up. I'm going to take my die cut piece, which is a, a layer smaller than the card base, and I'm going to stamp on it. I did have someone ask me about this little mat in my um, stamp platform. This is an idea I've stolen from Jennifer McGuire and I'm just trying it out. I'll link it down below, but they are um, no name brand, essentially Cricut cutting mats for a Cricut and they're just a light tack adhesive sheet, but they've got a grid line on them. And so I really like that because it makes it easier for me to line up my stamps and kind of get my card in the right spot. And it holds down my piece of cardstock as well, which is really handy. So I'll link those down below. I didn't want to really link them until I tried them out for a while first, but I've been playing with them and they've been going really well. And um, what I did was I took that little powder bag that I used on my card just now to make sure that there's no static on it. And I ran that all over the whole entire sticky mat because I found the sticky mat really sticky. But when you run the anti-static powder uh, little baggie over top of it, it kind of removes some of the adhesive and it makes it a perfect amount of stick. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've used my embossing ink and I've stamped that flower pattern on the background. And then I've come in with some black embossing powder and then I've heat set that and melted it so it's nice and shiny and now all I'm doing is coming in with my pencil crayons and doing partial cut coloring. So I'm not coloring the whole flower, I'm just kind of making some little lines and coloring in part of my flowers and I'm loving the effect because these pencil crayons just pop off that dark color. 
So it's really nice to use a dark color cardstock if you've got it. I'll share with you in a moment a light color cardstock and how they look and um, the comparison between them. But pencil crayons on cardstock can be really fun and we often forget about using them. So I've gone ahead and briefly colored that in. I didn't want to color it in really detailed because I used that embossing powder which kind of takes up some of the space. So I wanted to just do some partial coloring and I felt like that was enough for this card to be a beautiful background. I've gone ahead and glued that onto that top layer there and I've cut out some birthday sentiments. I believe these are from Alina Crafts. I'll link them down below if I can find them. I'll do my best as well to link down all the stamps that I'm using and any other products like the pencil crayons if you need to have a look. I've layered it up three times for that birthday and got a nice solid chunky birthday out of that. I'm going to come in with some vellum. So vellum is a sort of see-through plasticky paper and I'm using what's called vellum cardstock. So it is a thicker vellum. It doesn't really matter. Whatever vellum you've got will work fine. And I'm using some double-sided adhesive. This is the uh, Lena Crafts double-sided adhesive sheets. They come in A4. I like them because you get quite a lot of use out of an A4 sheet. I've cut myself about a centimeter wide strip. I just want a strip of vellum to go underneath that birthday. So I'm applying it to my vellum so that the whole entire piece of vellum is sticky. Therefore, we can't see the adhesive through it. And I've got some tonic uh, cardstock here. This is a kind of embossed one. It's a glacier blue is what I believe it was called. And I cut a strip just slightly wider than my vellum strip. So the vellum doesn't look like it's see-through because it's got that release paper on the back which is yellow. So once I remove that you can then see it nice and clear. I'm going to go ahead and adhere down my little backing strip of decorative paper or decorative cardstock trim off the edges because that's much easier than trying to measure and line it up. Then here's my vellum. So you can now see it's perfectly see-through and because it's got the adhesive across the whole entire back, we don't have to worry about trying to cover up the adhesive on the vellum because vellum is very difficult to cover up because it is see-through. I then go ahead and use some liquid glue to add my birthday onto the front of that. And here's that card base. You can see I've die cut over the edge. You need to now choose whether you want the opening to be on the left or whether you want it to be on the top. And make sure to turn your card base in that direction because the number of times I have gone and glued my front panel and glued it upside down or the wrong way around. So just make sure you're aware of where that fold line is and you line up the card. That is probably the most important bit of the whole entire card is getting that bit right because when you go and invest all your time into that card front and you glue it upside down, it's a right pain in the butt. So anyways, there's the finished card. Apart from, I'm going to come in now with a little bit of glossy accents, which is a see-through kind of glue and it dries clear. It goes on a bit foggy, but it does dry beautifully clear and it gives a bit of a dimensional look. So I'm putting that down on the centers of the flower to kind of make them pop a little bit. Here's the second card. I'm using the hearts dies from the creative range. I'll link these dies down below. They are fantastic nesting dies and they come in a whole range of different shapes and sizes. They all are really big. The big ones are really big, but you can use all of the middle ones in a standard big shot. The big ones you will need a, um, a Big Shot Plus or um, an A4 cutting machine if that makes sense. So I've done the exact same thing I did on the first one with this one here and I've laid that die just over the edge so you get a nice crease that you can make a card base out of. Then cut myself another layer in the same color to go on top of it to cover up the crease. And then I've got a bit of craft cardstock here. I'll link this stamp set down below as well. This is a new one from Woodware. I love it. It is gorgeous. It's got that kind of natural sketched look to it, which I find really fun. This one, I'm using the VersaFine um, ink or the VersaMark ink, and I was going to use that sort of shimmer powder and emboss over it, but I decided that actually I love that look of this slightly tone on tone look. So I'm setting it, but there's no powder here. This is just heat setting it so that it's nice and dry. I'm going to come in with my pencil crayons again and I like to take a piece of scrap paper and just work out how the colors will look. Now 
craft cardstock is very similar to normal cardstock uh, or a dark cardstock in the sense that you can see the colors really pop off of it. So it's worth just making sure you test out your colors and see which colors you like on it. But it does stand out and pop off really beautifully well. Now I didn't want to bore you, so here's the finished card. Um, I did a bit of brief coloring in. I took a white gel pen and added some of that on the top. So you can see that nice fold there which is covered up by that top layer. It just kind of disguises it beautifully. I took the die here, I placed it over top of my craft cardstock cutout of the heart. Now the heart is the same shape as this die or the same size. I just placed it over the top and then took my white gel pen and traced on the inside and that's kind of how I got that white outline. It's always worth having a look at what's in your stash, seeing if you've got any pens that you could use for some fun techniques like that. I then added in some white dots to kind of merge that white line and kind of blend in that vellum that's in the background. I die cut out two hearts, one in vellum and one in the craft card stock and stamp just for you, which came from the same stamp set, which was nice. And then I popped the craft foam um, or the craft heart die cut on the top there in foam. And that's uh, the card that had the glossy accents all dried. You can see they're perfectly clear and they give a bit of a dimension to the card. So I hope this was a fun little easy Saturday night crafting just to remind you to get out those uh, tools that you probably already have in your craft stash or raid your kids stuff if you've got kids and dig out those pencil crayons and just have fun. And if you've got any shape dies, then you can go ahead and add that element in as well and create some fun, unique, different sized cards. And if you have any square envelopes, that will work perfect for different shaped cards. You don't need to have a fancy envelope. At the end of the day, you're just posting the card and it doesn't need to be in a crazy cool envelope. It can just be a normal envelope because your card is crazy cool. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Let's hope and pray we get a video for the midweek next week. And um, I hope and hope and hope that I can get you a half hour video because that's what I really want to do. And I love a midweek video with you guys. So have a fantastic weekend and I will see you this week. Take care. Bye.